lovely evening. Wonderful, wonderful. Good. So today, oh my goodness. I know I keep saying this, but ooh, these lessons, these lessons. <laughs> these lessons. If you would have seen me yesterday, and then I looked at this lesson, trust in God, it's always telling me what to do. And that's a good thing. <laughs> so I am truly sure grateful. I'm truly grateful for these lessons. They always come on time. And I'm just talking for me personally. They always, they come, always on come on time. Always, always come on time. When I need it, they always come on time. The message. Thank you. All right. So, Amy, so ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, let's, um, let's just, um, if you have somebody um, in your heart, that you want to pray for. Just um, keep that person in your heart. But we have a lot of things that we're praying for. So um, if you could please bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we, again, Lord, we just want to thank you on today, Lord. Lord, we ask that you take anything that's not like you out of our bodies, Lord, and let our bodies be a living sacrifice for you. Lord, we ask that you go into the hearts and just reach in and all of the words, all of the people, the names that we have in our hearts, Lord. We ask that you just touch all the people we have in our hearts, Lord. We're asking for a special prayer for our deacon, Rolando Bell, Lord, and all the others that are in bereavement we have sister Rhonda, and there are others that are not coming to my remembrance but we ask that you strengthen them and just let them know that you were there that you are a comforter lord and we ask that you send their com your comfort their way lord we ask that you touch our first lady and we're glad that you have her home and that she's doing so much better so we do Lord, thank you for that. We also want to thank you for our pastoral staff, Lord. We thank you that they are all mighty men of God, Lord, and they're following your word, they're following your will, and they're teaching us in the way that we all should go. Lord, I ask that you bless all the mothers that's on the line, Lord, and all of our mothers in Faith Temple Church, Lord. Our Mother Emeritus, Lena Mae Winners, Lord, we ask that you continually touch her, rejuvenate her body, Lord, and also our own Mother Helton, our Mother Randleston, Mother Miller, Mother McKnight, Mother Peace, and Mother Houston. That's why that, I hope I didn't miss anyone, Lord, but you know my heart. We ask that you touch our mothers, Lord. And Lord, we give you all the honor and the place. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that you've given us an opportunity just to be on this venue so we can learn more and more about you, Lord. You know, and we just ask that you just continually to put in us the word that you want us to have in us that we can reach out to others, Lord, and draw them in so they can be closer to you, Lord. And again, Lord, we ask you just continually just keep our children under your watch for care, Lord. We know that school is starting in some areas and will be starting in other areas. We ask, Lord, that you please protect our children for every hurt, harm, and danger, Lord. And we give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. In your son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen, ladies and gentlemen. Your words. As Elder Terrell preached, he is. And as this lesson says, trust in God. Amen. We need to trust God a whole lot more than just leaning to our own understanding because we will mess ourselves up doing that. So again, I thank God for this lesson. So we do have our background readings. We have a lot of reading. We have Psalms 20. We have Psalms 7. We also have Psalms 37 chapter and um, the third to the fifth verse. And we have 
118th chapter, the 8th and the 9th verse, and we also have the 4th chapter in the 5th verse. We have Proverbs, 16th chapter, the 20th verse, and also the 28th chapter in the 25th verse. We have Isaiah, 26th chapter, the 2nd through the 4th verse. Our devotional reading is Daniel, the 3rd chapter, the 13th to the 25th verse. And our central reading is Proverbs, the 3rd chapter, in the 5th verse. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you our teacher for this evening. We have Elder Terrell Batson that's going to be teaching us on this beautiful lesson of trusting God. So, ladies and gentlemen, can we please all say amen as he comes. Amen, Elder Terrell. You're on mute, my dear. Amen, amen. You guys hear me? Yes, we yes. Yeah. Good to see you all this evening. Um, just, uh, just pray for me tonight. I got a headache. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm trusting in God. Amen. <laughs> amen. All right. Um, <clears throat> our lesson is lesson 10. Trusting God. Um, we have a lot of scriptures tonight, uh, particularly in Psalm. Psalms, will be Proverbs, will be in Isaiah. Um, our devotional will be Daniel, which we'll do last. Um, I'm excited about that. So uh, let's get started. Can we just start with our introduction and then we will go from there? Okay, Elder, I can read the introduction for you. Thanks, Sister. Um, Trust is something that every human must learn to have to live in a fulfilled, balanced life, or to live a full, balanced life. It would be a very miserable life to live a life mistrusting everybody and everything. Humans start learning who and what people to trust as babies. Babies usually come into the world filled with trust. They trust everybody and everything. Most people, when they first get saved, are so full of love and joy that they love and trust everybody. However, as they develop their relationship with God, the God in them begins to let them know who to trust and who not to trust, just as the mother teaches her baby. Trust is the firm belief in the reliability, truth, availability, or strength of someone or something. Then the believer is trusting God, believing in his reliability, his word, his ability, and his strength. That Amen. Was the Amen. Thank you, Sister Kid. Girl, what? Trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Since then the believer is trusting God, believing in his reliability, his word, his ability, and his strength. Amen. So um, we're going to look at trust and, and, and what trust is and how we come to trust God. But I first want to start off by uh, looking at the things we put our trust in first. Amen. Um, a lot of times we go through this life and just like the introduction said, when you're a baby, um, you trust everything. You know, you're a baby. You don't have any uh, sensibility to know, you know, who to trust, who not to trust. You know, a stranger can come up and give a baby some candy. The baby's going to take it because the baby has not developed uh uh, any personal relationships uh, with individuals outside of their mother and their father enough to know whether or not this person has their best interests at heart. So when we talk about trusting God, we have to first start off with understanding that it starts off with the relationship. Amen? That's the basis for trust, period, is a relationship. Uh, if there's no relationship, then there cannot be trust. So uh, let's look at uh, Psalms, go to Psalms, get right into Psalms. Psalm, the 20th, the 20th Psalm, and 
verses 6 through 8. If I could have somebody read that, Psalm 20, verses 6 through 8. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord, of the Lord our God. They brought, they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand aright. Save, Lord, let the King hear us when we call. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. So, <clears throat> going back, um, the first, the first, uh, the first through the fifth verse, the same uh, book, the the twentieth. Um, it starts off with a prayer, right? So, uh, and this is David. And David is asking that, that God deliver and save him in the day of trouble. Amen. Um, get to verse 5. It says that uh, we will rejoice in his salvation, meaning that we will rejoice in the fact that he saves us. And then in verse 6, David goes on to respond to his own prayer. Amen. So 1 through 5, David's praying, and then he goes into verse 6, and now he's responding to his own prayer. Amen. And, and what he says is that he knows uh, that God saves his anointed. Amen. So he's asking God, God, just save your anointed. Now he's saying, but I know you save your anointed. Amen. He's saying that he knows God will hear his prayer from heaven. Right. So uh, trust has to be the preface before it can be the conclusion. Amen. And what, I, what I mean by that is we can't wait to trust God after he's fulfilled the petition. Amen. That's not trust. He already did it. You know, trusting in God has to be the preface. I mean, it has to be the first thing that we do. It has to be the first thing that we do. When we come to him with the petition, when we come to him, and this is why David is answering his own prayer, because he already trusts that God will save him from trouble. Amen. Um, I don't have to trust you if you've already done it. You already did it, you know. It's in that process of, are you going to do it, that I have to apply the trust. Amen? He's already fulfilled the petition in David's mind. He's already done it. All right? So, trust means reliance. And we just read this in the introduction. Uh, reliability. Relying in a person or a thing. It's confidence. Amen. Confidence in a person or a thing. It's easy to be confident in something that has already been proved. Amen. If it's already been proved, it's easy to have confidence in it. All right. It's easy to have confidence in it. It's easy to be confident in something that has already happened. Amen. But can you trust something that's never happened? Can you trust in something before it happens? Amen. Can I be confident in something with no history of provision? Something that ain't never done nothing for you before. <laughs> Can you put your trust in it? Amen. It's easier said than done, right? Most times you'll say no. All right. And we, we see here. An example of a man who trusts God to the point where he is confident enough to respond on behalf of God to his own prayer. Lord, I pray that you protect me. But Lord, I know you're going to protect me. That means he trusts him. Amen. Then he gives the reason why he's confident. Because he doesn't put his trust in things that aren't trustworthy. Amen. He does not put his trust in things that aren't trustworthy. The army, it's talking about an army, the army uh, to whom he's praying against, they put their trust in chariots and in their horses. Amen? But what happens when the wheels fall off of the chariot? Amen? What happens when that <laughs> horse run and break his leg? Amen? <laughs> when that horse pass out from all that running or get hit with an arrow and go down then what amen then what what happens when a horse is injured alright 
It says they are brought down and fallen. But we who remember the name of the Lord, we rise above the trouble. God cannot be injured. Amen. There's nothing that falls off of God. God is always who he says he will be. He's always is. Amen. Remember the exodus of the Israelites out of the hands of uh, Pharaoh in Egypt. You remember that? When they arrived to the Red Sea, what did God do? You can talk to him. No, he opened it up so they can pass, but he stopped the chariots first. <laughs> he, he made a way. Amen. Like Sister Kid said, he opened up a way for his people. Amen. He opened up the way when they got to the place where they had no other option. We're at the sea now. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> Amen. We're here. So God made a way for the Israelites to go through, not just to go in, but to go through. And when Pharaoh's chariots attempted to go through the path that God made for his people, the wheels fell off the chariots. Amen. <laughs> when they got in, the seas closed on them. Why? Because that path was not made for your enemy to go through. You were made to go through. Because we say that all the time. I'm going through it. But then we have this mindset that we're staying in it. If you're going through it, then do exactly what you say you're doing and go through it. Don't stay in it. The enemy stayed Amen. in it because the path was created for you. God's children to go through. So just go through. But you got to trust him. Amen. When them, when them walls come up and God make that path, you got a decision to make. I'm going to cross this sea or I'm going to stand here and not trust God and have Pharaoh and the chariots tear me up. Amen. They made the decision to trust God. All right. Uh, Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Verses 17 and 18. Somebody would like to read that. 33, 17, and 18. 33, 17, and 18. <clears throat> Verse 17 says, And a horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. I'm talking about those horses again. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Amen. So no matter how strong the horse is, no matter how swift the horse may be, it cannot outrun death. Amen. That horse can run for his life. Eventually it's going to stop. <laughs> Eventually it's going to die. But God yeah. is a shelter. He is hope. He is help. He is a refuge in the time of trouble. Amen. He's always there. God never runs out of who he is. He's always is. Amen. Uh, let's go back and look at what David said. While others put their trust in horses and chariots. David says that he will remember the name of the Lord. Amen. He said he remembered. You put your trust in chariots. You put your trust in horses. But I will remember the name of the Lord. And why didn't he just say, I'm just going to trust in God? Why would he say, remember? I will remember the name of the Lord. He will remember the name of the Lord. <laughs> Somebody say something? We don't want to... It's, it's, it's me, baby. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, we don't want to forget who brought us out. I need Amen. to remember who brought me out. Amen. He's already <laughs> proven himself. I know I can trust him no matter what. So I don't need... I don't want to forget who pulled me out of my situation. Amen. Spot on. Amen. I don't want to forget who already done something for me amen that 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 word remember in hebrew <clears throat> is a car and it means to recall it means to uh be thought of 
It means to bring to mind. Amen. Now, going back to what I said earlier, um, can I be confident in something with no history of provision? No. You know what I mean? I'm not confident because it never provided anything. But when I remember what God did before, amen, when I recall his greatness, amen, what he delivered me from, who he delivered me from before, then I have the confidence that he can do it again. Amen. I trust that he'll do it again. That's why David said, I remember, because this wasn't the first time where David had to be delivered. Amen. David went through years of being delivered out of the hands of his enemies, and God had not failed him every single time. Amen. So that's why he said, you can put your trust in all of these physical things, these tangible things. I'm going to remember the name of the Lord. And when I remember I'll be confident because I know he did it before. He's going to do it again. Amen. He'll do it again. All right. Moving forward. Psalm. Uh, the seventh Psalm. Verse one. It says, Oh Lord, my God. That's in all caps. So I hear David screaming when he say that. <laughs> oh Lord, my God. Indeed, do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Amen. Oh, Lord. That's a statement. Man, that's a statement. You ever you ever look at the Bible and a, and a lot of times you see that word O oh, in the Bible is just, just a big O. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Lord. Four words. Oh, Lord, my God. And these four words denote who God is to David. Amen. That word, oh, so it's a word, but it's a letter. Amen. And when they use it in, in literature, um, it denoted that the individual was seeking the attention of the name who he was calling. Amen. So when you say, oh, oh, in modern day would be like, hey, amen. I'm trying to get your attention. So when he says, oh, Lord, he's seeking God's attention. I want you to hear me, God. And then, Lord. Amen. That word Lord just means ruler. Amen. The ruler. One who has authority over another. All right. If God is not ruler over your life, then he is not your Lord. Amen. There's a lot of people that say Lord, Lord this, Lord that, but they haven't allowed God or let God rule over their lives. So how is he your Lord? He has to have total rule over your life to be your Lord. Amen. And then after he says, oh, Lord, David makes a personal statement. What does he say? Oh, Lord. My God. <laughs> My God. Amen. We all know he is God. But I make it personal. He's my God. Amen. He's my God. Meaning that he belongs to me and I belong to him. Mm -hmm. All this tells us is that we cannot trust God without a personal relationship and acknowledgement of who he is. It starts with a relationship. Amen. How can you trust him when you don't know him? He don't know you. It starts with a relationship. Anybody I give rule over me, I trust. But don't nobody rule over me but God. Amen. I trust. And that's how it's supposed to be. The only person that should have rule over your soul. Amen. Your mind, your heart is the Lord. And when he does, it enables us to trust him in capacities that you would not be able to trust him if you did not know him. Amen. And then the next scripture, it makes it clear. Uh, Psalms 118. And I'm sorry, we, we, we jumped through these songs. We got a lot of songs. So I'm just going one by one. Amen. 
Psalms 118, verses 8 through 9. If you have it, if you could read that. It's two verses. 118 and 8 through 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Amen. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence, which is trust, in man. Then he says it again. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put then to put confidence in princes, which are just rulers, amen? Mm -hmm. People of higher authority. What's the problem with men? Why can't we put our trust in men? What's the issue with men? We're corrupt. We're corrupt. <laughs> man will let you down. Man will let you down. They're corrupt. We. Amen. Sinful. Sinful. Amen. Does man have the ability to get you saved? No. 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 Can man keep get you into heaven? No. 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 The pastor can't get you into heaven? No. 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 All right. Can't do it. Who can get you into heaven? Me. Me. Jesus. 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 <laughs> There's nothing we can do, amen. Jesus already did it. All you have to do is believe. Amen. That's all you have to do is believe. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Amen. That God raised him from the dead. The Bible says ye shall be saved. And then after that, it's up to you to keep that walk. You can't blame anybody else. After that, it's up to you to keep that walk. And it's up to the spirit of God. If you have the spirit of God and if you allow the spirit of God to move in your life and direct you. Amen. But putting our trust in man for anything. Um, and, and, and I say that loosely because we, we, we there are people that we trust. Amen. That we love. Of course, that we definitely trust. Uh, but uh, David is speaking about um, total. Um, a total surrenderance to an individual that has the ability to keep you and no man has that ability to do so amen man is incapable of doing anything on his own did you know that mm -hmm. there was nothing that you can do on your own that's right did you know that yeah. amen man. <laughs> you can't do nothing <laughs> we can do nothing you can do nothing on your own. We think we can. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> to eat, you got to trust somebody's food. When you go out there and eat all of this food, you go buy all this chicken, you got to trust that whoever <laughs> whoever got that chicken is a real chicken. <laughs> and shoot him up with, <laughs> with, 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 you know. <laughs> Even when you're chewing your food and drinking water, you got to you gotta tell God, thank you while you're eating and drinking. Because yeah. you can also choke off water if it go down the wrong way. You can choke yeah. off food if it go down on the wrong way. So you always got to bless your food and thank God for it. Because just swallowing something can mess you up. Sorry for Amen. cutting it. No, no, no. That's absolutely right. Amen. You go out driving, you got to trust your car. Amen. <laughs> you put your trust in this vehicle. To get you from point A to point B. Amen. You want to go to New York. You got to trust the airplane. Actually, you got to trust the pilot. <laughs> the pilot got to trust the airplane. <laughs> Amen. So there's nothing that we do on our own. We always have to put our trust in something else in order for us to live. You get that? And this is what David is talking about. We put our trust in everything else but God. Not realizing that everything that happens is because of God. Amen. We trust everything but God, not understanding that. Because with him, all things are possible. Sitting up, sitting down, laying down, standing up, talking, seeing, smelling, hearing, walking, running. 
everything that we do is because God allows. Amen? So why trust something that relies on everything else yet denies the very reason that we are able? This is what it means when he says trust in the Lord. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in men. Because men don't make nothing. Amen? We don't control anything. God doesn't rely on anything. Who does God put his trust in? Himself. Himself. He Why? is. Because he is. Because he is. He is. He is. He is. He is the Alpha. The Omega. Amen. He don't need to trust us. He don't need to trust nobody. But we have to trust everything. And we don't trust the thing that we need to. Which is him. I feel like it, it, it's so easy when you, when, you, when you put it together and you add it up. But we make things so complicated. And we're going to talk about why we do things like that. Amen. Um, as smart as man is, though, with his knowledge, um, man built airplanes. Man is able to make the planes fly in the sky. And somebody may argue that. Well, you know, we, was, we, we were smart enough and intelligent enough to build an airplane. They could fly in the sky. Amen. But who provided the sky? Amen. Come on now. Who put the sun up there? So that your pilot can see where he's going. Who put the stars up there? Who put the moonlight up there? It, it, it's just, there's no comparison when we try to compare what we do to what God did and what God does. Amen. There's no comparison. An airplane don't mean nothing to God. Amen. You ever see a meteorite? <laughs> Amen. You ever see a planet? He did that. Amen. Mankind is inherently corrupt. This is why we don't put our trust in man. And when he says man, he's talking about man. We're inherently corrupt. And not everyone has your best interest at heart. Not everybody does. Amen. You can look, you can, you can trust somebody. They'll look you right in the face. They'll smile at you. Say they got you. Turn around and that same person will stab you in the back. Amen. They will tell you something. In your face, you walk away and they will say the exact opposite to somebody else about you. <laughs> Amen. You know what I love about God? Is God don't ever talk behind your back. Whatever God has to say to you, he's going to say it to you. Amen. God ain't going to tell the angels about you, you know, brother, so and so. You think I don't be knowing. God's going to talk directly to you. <laughs> Amen. Directly to you. Why? Because he's faithful. He's just. Amen. That's the way he is. All right. Uh, let's move forward. Any uh, questions or comments? You know, Elder Terrell, can you hear me, Sister Rennell? Yeah. I hear you, Sister Rennell. Um, we trust in our doctors. Mm -hmm. And like myself, I trust my doctor, um, the um, information that he gives me based on his his knowledge and expertise. Mm -hmm. But my 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 trust is in God. I I, I I that's why I pray. You know, even though my doctor has recommended um, made recommendations for me to do this or take this type of medicine, I still I I trust God. And pray to God to um, help, you know, to work through um, the medicine that is prescribed for me. So I, I yeah. always, you know, put it in God's hand, because even though, you know, they have that expertise and knowledge, and I just ask God to to give them, you know, the um, give me the revelation to understand that um, that it will work out. You know, if I trust him. All right. Amen. <clears throat> and and there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Because God has supplied uh, doctors for us. 
and doctors do have knowledge and we're going to get into knowledge um but at the same time there's a sort certain point that the doctor can get to to where they can't go further than that and god has no barricade meaning that the doctor can only see the cancer and they can only say that there's nothing that we can do when it gets to a certain point and at that point that's when it's like okay you've done what you have done you've done your diagnosis but wherever you leave off at god can pick up at. and this is what trust is what trusting in god is it's it's about the small things but it's also understanding that god's trust has to go further than what mankind can see. Amen. The doctor said that my son wouldn't walk. And he won't stop running. <laughs> Amen. So it has to come to a point for the individual to understand that the doctors have the knowledge. They have the science. Amen. But they don't have all the answers when it comes to what God says about the situation. And that's when we take it to him. Amen. Amen. All right. Elder, um, Terrell, Elder Terrell, another thing um, um, with the medicine. Also, I trust that um, God will work through the medicine because, you know, we don't know. But your doctor mm -hmm. recommended and I just trust God that he's going to work through the medicine. You know, in, in a spiritual way, not, you know, the, you know, just because it's medicine is the, the new, um, you know, medicine that I just know that God will work through. It. Amen. Amen. That's right, Sister Ray. And in, in no way am I, am, am, am I on here saying, you know, guys, don't trust the doctors and don't trust the medicine. That's, that's not the message I'm trying to do that. Amen. If you got your medicine, take the medicine. Amen. Definitely take the medicine. But just like Sister Renee was saying, you have to pray. I pray over everything. You know, um, it's certain. I pray over food. I pray over medicine. If I got to take medicine, I pray over everything because I want to make sure that what I'm taking is helpful for me, for my health. And on a spiritual note, um, I trust that God, regardless of what's going on, that God will take care of everything if I continue to put my trust in him. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Amen. Let's look at Proverbs. Proverbs 28 and 26. Proverbs 28 and 26. If you have it, you can read it. He that trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Thank you, Sister Angie. Mm -hmm. Solomon got straight to the point. <laughs> he who trusted in his own heart is a fool. Amen. Is a fool. Um, let's look at that. Uh, wisdom. Let's talk about wisdom. Because it says, but whoso walketh wisely, which means that he who walks in wisdom says he shall be delivered. Wisdom is comprehending God's truth. Amen. Uh, only the wise can comprehend God's truth. Uh, Proverbs 1 and 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. So knowledge, knowledge is just information. That's what knowledge is. It's mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. And God's information is true. Amen. Mm -hmm. God's information, everything that he has is true. There's no lies in his information. There's no deceit in his information. His information is truth. All right. So our ability to obtain truth starts with referencing who God is. That's why Proverbs 1 and 7 says the fear of the Lord, which is reverence, is the beginning of knowledge. Understanding who God is, referencing who he is, is the beginning of us understanding what truth is. Amen. It starts with God, understanding who he is. And when we apply this truth, that's what wisdom is. Amen. Because wisdom is just applying knowledge. It's applying truth. Wisdom is not your age. Amen. I had nothing to do with wisdom. All right. That's not what makes us wise. 
It's our ability to understand and apply God's truth. Amen. Now, where does trust fit in? Talking about truth. What does that have to do with trusting God? All right. And the two words are similar. Truth is the vehicle to trust. Amen. Truth is the vehicle to trust. All right. I can trust the chair that I'm sitting in because it's been proven true to support me. I've sat in this chair many of times and never broke one. All right. So I trust it because the truth of the matter is it has done its job. All right. So truth is the vehicle to trust. it. All right. I trust God because he's been truthful with every promise regarding my life. So truth is the vehicle to trust. That's how we get there. The truth. It gets us to trust. And then trust is the vehicle to obedience. Amen. The fact of the matter is you will not obey when you cannot trust. You don't listen to nobody you don't trust. Amen. I can't speak for y'all. Give an example. Why do you think people, mother, is that you? The piece. I thought you said something. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. No, I think I hit something on my keyboard. <laughs> sorry. No problem. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> but yeah, trust. Uh, 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 look at the police. You know why people have a hard time obeying the police? Why? Because they don't trust them. They don't trust them. They don't trust them. Amen. Protect and serve. I don't, I don't trust that. Amen. That's not me personally. I don't, there are, there are, there, there, very good police out there, and they're very bad ones. Amen. But I'm just giving an example. Amen. It's hard to be obedient when you don't trust. You see where I'm going with this? The issue is that we place our trust in ourselves rather than God. When we ourselves have not been truthful. With who we are. Amen. How can we trust ourselves? How can we trust our heart. When every day without God. You have to convince yourself. That you can do it on your own. Amen. That's what's happening. Every day you live without God. You're convincing yourself that you don't need him. And it's not true. It's a lie. And we, our hearts, follow this lie every day. As long as we don't, li- as long as we live without God, we're lying to ourselves. Amen. Now we think we're not. We don't. We're not aware of it. When you're an unbeliever, you're not aware of that. I don't need God. Amen. Until something happens, and you realize. Amen. Who have you been trusting? Nobody but yourself. And you can't do it on your own. Amen? Because if you could do it on your own, if you could do it all by yourself, you would have figured out by now how to avoid the obstacles of life. But guess what? Nobody's figured that out yet. Nobody. Why? Because you can't avoid it. And this is what brings us to trusting in who God is. If you can't avoid the thing, then what are you trusting in? Because it's going to come regardless whether you want it or not. So the heart, a heart doesn't belong to God. A heart that does not belong to God will always run back to what is comfortable, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Amen. A heart without God will lie to itself. And I'm not lying because Jeremiah 17 and 9 says it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. That same heart that tells you, I love that person. It's the same heart that will tell you the next day, I hate that person. It's the same heart. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. The same heart. But every time I put my trust in God, 
as much as men have failed me, thank you, Lord, as much as my stony heart has failed me, guess what? God has never failed me. Amen? Now, some people may think Amen. otherwise and say, well, never I was asking for something, you know, God didn't give me what I wanted. That don't mean he failed you. That means you wasn't supposed to have what you wanted. <laughs> he saved you. Amen. He protected you because what you wanted, wanted to kill you. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. But every time I trusted in him, he never failed me. He never has. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, I hope we got a, a grasp of trusting God and what it means to be trusting God and putting our trust in God and only God. Amen. Um, and not putting our trust in other things that try to keep us from God. But now let's look at the benefits of trusting God. You know, there's, there's benefits. Amen. In this walk, there's benefits, but there's benefits of trusting God. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Somebody read verses 3. Through five. So on thirty seven verses three through five. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. <laughs> now, when, looking at those verses, do you see there's the action, and then there's the consequence? Amen. And then in between the action and the consequences are the shafts. See, Brother Michael put it. <laughs> the shafts. Amen. The shafts. Trust in the Lord and do good. And what's the shouts? They will dwell in the land. Amen. And verily they shall be fed. So again, this is David speaking. We want to put it in this proper context. This is David speaking. And he's writing this song to encourage the people. Amen. Uh, because often we dwell on the worries of life when God's provision has kept us thus far. Amen. God been keeping you and keeping you and keeping you and one thing pop up and it's just like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I know that personally. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bring you to a certain point. Amen. And then boom, something happened. It's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to worry about it? Are you going to trust God? Amen. You going to worry about it? You going to trust God? So David is speaking. Amen. He's talking about what God has done for them. What they've done for them. You're no longer in captivity, Israel. He done brought you out. <laughs> Amen. We are no longer in captivity. But guess what? When you doubt and when you worry, you become captive to your thoughts. Amen. You put your mind in jail. This is why Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind, hallelujah, is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Amen. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So in order for me to trust God, first and foremost, amen, we already talked about it. We have to have a relationship. But before we get there, my mind has to be free of doubt, of worries, and of fear. Because those are the things that go against faith and trusting in God's promises. But as long as my mind is incarcerated, I'll always be in conflict with what I want to believe and what I see right in front of my face. I want to believe that he can do it, but I don't see that in front of my face. 
Well, that's not what faith is. What is faith? Y'all know it. What is faith? Substance of things hoped for, evidence of mm-hmm. things seen. What was the last part? The evidence of things what? Not seen. Unseen. Not seen. Unseen. Not seen. It's not going to be in your face. If you can see it, there's no need to have faith. Amen? Mm-hmm. You just got to know that it's coming. Amen. You got to know it's coming. No matter the time, no matter the length. All right. I I always think about Lazarus. Because they came to him and they was like, Jesus, your friend is sick. And Jesus waited. And I always thought, why did he wait? Why did he wait? Because he knew that there's a certain time that I have to arrive. Because if I arrive too early, they won't get the full glory of the presentation of the miracle that God wants to accomplish in his life. So I got to weigh it out. And a lot of times God is telling us, I'm on my way, but I have to wait. Because you're not going to get the miracle. Hallelujah. That God wants to provide in your life if you rush him Mm -hmm. into it. Thank you, Lord. Sister Angie, I see your hand. Go on, finish your statement. I, I, I pushed that too mature, prematurely. Finish your statement. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. Um, but the mind, amen. So our mind has to be free, amen. It has to be free. I can't see, I can't, just because I can't see it in front of me does not mean that it's not on its way. So what has to happen to the mind is that it has to be made free, amen. And to be made free, it has to be renewed. Romans 12 and 2. What does that say? Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. What does Philippians Philippians 2 and 5, what does that say? Philippians 2 and 5. Let this, Let mind, this mind go ahead. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Got to be changed. I can't trust. I can't trust God with that old mind, with that old incarcerated mind. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Angie, did you want to uh, ask your question or make your statement? <laughs> Actually, actually, you answered it because I, uh, you had said, but before we can get there, get to where we have faith or where we can, um, you know, you said we have to get, you know, we have to get our minds right, get our, get our, but then you just, you went there, you went there, you answered it <laughs> with those <laughs> scriptures. Yes, yeah, thank you. Because my question was going to be, so what, how do, how do we do that, basically? Because you said before we can get to, what the faith part? We have to uh, ha- get rid of all this stuff. Get get our minds right, basically. So you answered it. I was going to ask about that. How do we straighten out our mind? Doesn't that require the help of God as well? Okay, that was it. But you came to it. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Amen. And that's what's required. Amen. New mind. Change mind. All right. <clears throat> Proverbs. Uh, three and five. Trust in the Lord with some of your heart. With all oh. your heart. Oh. Oh. oh, there you go. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there. Because a few minutes ago, we just established that the heart was wicked. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. That's what Isaiah said. <laughs> I mean, Jer- uh, uh, Jeremiah. We established that the heart was wicked. So how can we trust in the Lord with all our heart if it's wicked? Amen? What does that mean? What what has to happen to the heart? It has to be renewed. 
be renewed. It has to it, it, it not even renewed. Like God don't want that. God want to take that heart and throw it away and give you a whole new one. <laughs> Amen. New heart it has to come from a pure heart. Amen. It has to be a transformation. Transformation. Amen. He's got to get rid of that stony heart and replace it, it with the heart of flesh. There it, it has is. to be a clean change heart. heart, a change, a changed heart. Amen. Change heart, clean heart, new heart. Mm -hmm. First lady said, "Get rid of the stony heart." That's Ezekiel thirty-six and twenty-six. He said, "A new heart, Amen. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. That's that hard heart, and I will give you a heart of flesh, Amen." And it says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye, excuse me, shall keep my commandments and do them. All right. So before we can start trusting God, it's two things that have to change. The mind and the heart. They have, he has to be Lord over both. And that's why it's so hard for people to trust God. Because they not they have not allowed him to be Lord over both because they have not committed themselves to who he is. Amen. Once we receive a new heart, then we can go and do what verse 27 says. Amen. Walk in his statutes. And that's Ezekiel 36. This is also when we become capable of trusting in God. Amen. That's when we become capable. So I stopped at trusting the Lord with all thy heart. The second part of that was lean not into thine own understanding. Amen. Uh, Sister Amanda, I see your hand. And then also like your heart is like once you do like once you leave something in your heart, that's it. Like once it it could it, it could be in your mind, but once it reaches your heart, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, whether it be love, whether it be hate, it's a it's a it's a done decision. Locked in. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It grabs it, right? That's why the heart is so tricky. The heart is very tricky. But just imagine if that if that if that heart, you use that same analogy, grab on the God, lock in on Him, and it <laughs> takes a new heart to do that. Because your, your your stony heart is not capable of doing that because it does not have the understanding yet of who He is. Amen. Lean not into your own understanding. Remember, the ability to obtain truth starts with reverencing God, understanding who he, is, who he is. So when our heart is made new, now we know that our own understanding pales in comparison to God's understanding. So the only option I have now is to trust him because I can't trust anything else. Amen. If you ever get to the point in your life where you exhausted all of your sources, all of your resources, you have ever been there? Amen. Hey You're frozen, Elder Bastin. You're frozen. Yeah, frozen, oh man. He's frozen, but he won't be able to hear you if he's frozen. Yeah, I can't Let's hear him. Give me a second to uh, let his internet catch up. He's not on the screen. You guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Um. So lean not to your own understanding. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Verse six. It says, "In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He what? He shall 
Direct. Direct my path. Amen. That means that in every avenue of your life, you have to acknowledge God. And what it means by acknowledge is show him who he is. Amen. Show him who he is to you. And that requires that you trust in him. Amen. Trust in him. All right. Um, so we looked at trusting, trusting in God, trusting in other things. We looked at the benefits of trusting. Now let's look at trusting in God's providence. Amen. His provision. And we're going to go to the book of Daniel. The third chapter. It's a very familiar verse. Very familiar chapter. Amen. Very familiar chapter. Actually, one of my favorite chapters. <clears throat> the book of Daniel. And the third verse. And no, third chapter, 13 verse. Now, it says 13 through 25, but we're just going to go through it step by step. Um, so can I have somebody read verses 13 and 14? Daniel 3, 13 and 14. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought them, these men, before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Amen. Thank you, Sister Angie. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the beginning of chapter 3, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he made a gold image of himself, and he had all of these idols. Amen. And um, in verses 5 and 6, uh, it says, uh, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Amen. So these three young brothers, Darach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, they refused to bow down and worship the false god. Amen. Now, it says um, in verse 8, it says, Wherefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans, or Babylonians, came near and accused the Jews. Meaning that th these three boys, after the decree was made, uh, they didn't bow down and worship God. I mean, worship the false God. But it was for a period of time that they had gone unnoticed until certain Babylonians noticed that they weren't bowing. Amen. So that's why it says they accused the Jews because they, they saw, you know what? They're not bowing. Amen. And then you have to understand why they accused the Jews. Now, these boys, they never made a sin. Amen. They simply just didn't comply with the decree that went against their God. Amen. When the decree went forth, they didn't jump on and say, we're not doing it. They didn't make a scene. They said, we're not going to do it. Amen. They simply just did not do it. They did not broadcast it pu publicly. Amen. But they also didn't hide it. Clearly, they didn't hide it because the child even saw them and saw that they weren't bowing. So they weren't broadcasting it, but they also weren't hiding it. We're not bowing. Amen? We're not bowing. All right? So at the same time, you have to understand why these three Hugo boys had found favor. Amen? They had found favor from the king. All right? And he put them in a high position. Now, these are Hebrew. These are Israelites. And they are in Babylon. Amen. And they have favor from the king and he puts them in a position over other Babylonians. And you know what that's going to cause? It's going to cause jealousy. It's going to cause resentment. It's going to cause envy. Amen. So what did they do? They said, we know how to get them now. 
they're not bowing, we're going to go tell the king. We're going to go tell the king that they're not bowing because we want them to be burned to death. Amen. You know that when, whenever you're doing the work of God, the enemy sees you and he's waiting for you to slip up so he can accuse you. Amen. <laughs> so he can accuse you. So he can have his imps come and try to destroy you. But the Hebrew boys did nothing wrong. All right. They did nothing wrong. They just refused to bow. So now he's asking them the question. In that um, in, in that 14 verse, he asked them a question. He says, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? He's saying, you're not going to serve my God? Y'all not worshiping the image I set up? And he's asking them this because he put them in a position. He thought that, you know, everything was cool. <laughs> but you guys aren't serving my God. You guys are bowing down to my image. So he wants to know what's going on. So in verse 15, they give their response. And they say, now, if ye be ready at that time, or if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. This is King Nebuchadnezzar speak. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And then he says, and who is that God that mm -hmm. shall deliver you out of my hand? Mm -hmm. Amen. So the king gives them an ultimatum. When you hear the sounds of these instruments. You either bow down and worship the image or you'll burn in the fiery furnace. Amen. When you look at it from a spiritual lens, the decree was given and it broke two of the laws of God. Amen. The first two commandments. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Amen. Amen. And thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in water under the ground. So this image that the king had made had already <laughs> knocked off the first two commandments. It was a graven image of a man. Amen. That's an earthly thing. And it was a God. It was an idol God. So they weren't having it. They weren't having it. Amen. The decree directly went against God. And to top it off, he ends that verse with the audacity to say, and who is that God that shall deliver you from out of my hands? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Now he's questioning God. He's questioning God's power. He's questioning God's authority. He's questioning God's ability. Amen. And he's saying that there's nobody that can stop me from putting you in the furnace. There's nobody that can take you out of my hands. And this is the same thing that the enemy tells the believers. That there's nothing that you can do in this situation. There's nothing that's going to stop me from attacking you. But this is where the believer has to apply faith and trust in God. Amen. So the king challenges the Hebrew boy's God. And in verse 16, they answer the king. And it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. Oh, remember that? <laughs> He's trying to get, they're trying to get his attention. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. Poor, poor Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. We are not careful to answer thee in this manner. In other words, we don't need to answer you in this particular circumstance. You're commanding us to break a direct commandment of our Lord. And the answer is no. Hallelujah. And if you're asking why, we don't owe you an explanation. 
amen we don't serve you we serve God amen this is what they told the king we don't owe you an explanation we're not bound <laughs> verse 17 they say if it be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king in other words we're not bowing down so if you feel the need to throw us in the furnace then so be it put us in there but know that the same God that you just questioned is going to be the same God that delivers us out of your hands despite what you thought he will Glory be to God. So let's stop right there. Uh, because if you look at the response of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, look at their response in adversity. They stood their ground and they disobeyed the law only when the law would cause them to disobey God. Amen. I'll follow whatever the law is. I'll stop at the stop sign. I'll stop at the red light. I'll do the speed limit. I'll buckle my seat belt. But the government, if they ever tell me that I have to denounce the God I serve, then I will not bow. <laughs> Amen. Lock me up. Amen. Because I will not compromise my spirituality for any law, man-made law, or decree, or any deal. Amen. I will not compromise my belief for any president, any mayor, any governor, any king, any vice president, anybody in a high position. Why? Because in spite of your threats of consequence, I trust that God will provide a way for me to continue to serve him in the capacity that God has called me to do so. Amen. If, if, if the LGBT Elemental B don't have to stop bashing my beliefs, then I don't have to stop preaching my gospel. Amen? So these three boys, they stood their ground in front of the king, in front of Babylonians, in front of the princes, in front of the governors, in front of the captains, in front of the judges, in front of the counselors, in front of the sheriffs, in front of every Babylonian in high position, and they said, we will not bow with the threat of being burned alive. And then they responded in verse 18. But if not, we're talking about God. Verse 17, they said it could be so. Our God whom we serve will be able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But then they say, but if not, be it known unto thee, this is to you, king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. See, this is in connection with what they said in verse 17. God would deliver them out of the fire, but even if he does it, if it's his will for us to die in the fire, we just want to let you know we still not going to bow down and we still not going to worship your idol. See, trusting in God means that you have to have an even if mindset. You have to have an even if attitude. Even if the doctor says it's terminal. I trust that this is your plan, God, and you can do whatever man can't do. Even if you don't deliver me out of the circumstance, Lord, I trust that this is your will for my life and your will is good, it's perfect, and it's acceptable. Amen? Trusting God is knowing that he can deliver you out, but not demanding that he does so. That's trust. Amen? They didn't demand God. Sometimes God's plans don't match your desires. Amen? And you've got to learn how to accept that because his plan is mistake free. Your desires may have mistakes, may have stumbling blocks, may cause you to veer into different roads. Why? Because he knows what's best for us. And if it's my time to go, then it's my time to go. But I trust that whatever God does is well with my soul. 
Hallelujah. It's good. And I'm all right with that. Glory be to God. I've got to be faithful whether or not I know the outcome because God is in control. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So trusting in God means understanding the power of God, but also understanding submission to God. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, by knowing that God would deliver them, showed that they understood the power of God. And in the same notion, amen, with the even if, it shows that they understood how to submit to God's will. And both require trust. Amen. Both are a, pro a byproduct of trust. You'll never submit to God or you'll never submit to anybody, but you'll never submit to God if you do not trust him. Mm -hmm. But let's get let, let's get to the good part. Amen. Verse 19, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fear, in the form of his visage, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Verse 20 says, And he commanded the most mighty men, strong men, that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Get the strong men to bind them up. We need them chained real tight. <laughs> and were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. It says, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men. Remember those big strong men that bound them up? It slew those men and took up Shadrach, that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen? Ask me the consequences of trusting God. <laughs> they trusted God. And their consequence was being thrown into a furnace. Now, if you are not looking with a spiritual lens, you would say, now why would God throw them in a furnace when they stood up and trusted him? Why would he do that? Amen. And then let's look at the circumstances. Let's look at the circumstances. God always wants to make the circumstances impossible so he can show you his glory. Look at the circumstances. The fire was made seven times hotter than usual. The strongest men bound up the three boys, meaning they made sure that they could not get loose. They were thrown in with all their clothes on, meaning the king was hasty in his decision. He just wanted to burn up real quick because in those times when they were going to throw you in the furnace, they, you were bare. They took your clothes off. But there's a reason why they had their clothes on. Because God don't make mistakes. Amen. They weren't stripped naked. They were thrown in, locked up by strong men, super high prior, all their clothes on. But the king was so irate, he skipped that process. He wanted them to suffer fast. The devil wants you to suffer fast. Amen. But little did he know, King Nebuchadnezzar, that all these acts were necessary because God would ultimately get the glory Amen. Verse 23, it says, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound. Remember, they're bound. In the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. He was astoned and rose up in haste and spake and said to his counselors, Wait a minute. Did not we cast three bound into the midst of the fire? Yeah, we did. <laughs> and they answered and said unto the king, True, O king, what are you talking about? Amen. And he said unto them, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. Glory be to God. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ask me again, what are the consequences of trusting God? Thank you, Lord. 
the fire was seven times hotter than normal. These boys should have died instantly upon entering the furnace. And we know that because the other guys that threw them in died. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Verse 22 says, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, they took up the furnace exceeding hot, and the flame of the fire slew those men that looked, that, that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So why did the fire burn the strong man? But it did no harm to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prior to them entering into the furnace. There's a reason. It didn't harm the boys. It harmed the strong man. Amen? There's a reason. There's a reason that they had their clothes on. There's a reason. There's a reason why they were bound up. There's a reason. Thank you, Lord. Not just because the king was in a rush. Not because he wanted them to suffer. It's because God wanted to show you what happens when you put your trust in me. Glory be to God. Verse 27, it says, And the princes, the governors, the captains, the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Nor was there a hair on their head singed, neither were their coats, why they had a clothes, changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. So the same way they went in with their clothes was the same way they came out with their clothes. No smell of smoke, no evidence of fire, no scorch marks. Their hair was intact. You may be asking, how does this pertain to today? Amen. Because in the Christian walk, our lifestyle will be a witness to the unbeliever. Everything that you've had to endure was not for you, but it was for also the witnesses so that they can see the glory of God when he brought you out of your furnace unsinged. That's why they had the clothes on. Because I want you to see that the fire did not harm them. Thank you, Lord. And it says that Nebuchadnezzar was a stone. He was, he was astonished. He was in awe. Thank you, Lord. He was in awe. Well, let me give you this revelation. Amen. It says that he said, Lo, I see four men loose. Remember, they were bound real tight. Now they're in there loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Who is the Son of God? Oh, Lord. Jesus. You can talk to me. Who is the Son of God? Jesus. 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 How did the king know it was him? Uh -oh. He had to have heard the stories. <laughs> he had to have heard the story. Amen. Master be Son of God. It's so only if no... God can do something like that. <laughs> the king knew it was someone that was equal to the God that the three Hebrew boys had testified about before they got thrown in. Amen. God will give you a revelation. Amen. Because only God can do something like he knew it wasn't his God. <laughs> he knew it wasn't his idol God. Thank you, Lord. They told him before they went in that God would deliver him. Amen. That he would deliver them. So when he sees the fourth individual, he knew that it was the same God that they had mentioned. But here's the revelation. Because we may look at the situation and say that if they're tried in the fire, amen, that after they're placed in the furnace, God will show up. We always say that. I'm going through the fire, but after I'm in the fire, God will show up. But remember... Back when I said that there's a reason why the fire didn't harm the three Hebrew boys in the beginning. Once the furnace had opened up, it should have burned them, but it didn't. That lets us know that before they were even placed in the fire, Jesus was already present in the furnace. Because the, the fire did not harm them, that means that God was already working in the situation, not on the outside of the situation. Another thing. Fire is a representation of the Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Lord. And when the believer has that fire, that fire don't harm us, but that fire will tear that sinner up because it's convicting, because it changes. So the reason why the men burned up is because they were still in their sin. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been believing and following the power of God. So when they got to the furnace, the reason why it was seven times hotter is because seven is the number of completion. And God had already completed the work before his boys got in the furnace. I want to let us know tonight that God has already completed the work in your life before you stepped in the furnace because you trusted in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You trusted in him. If you trust in him, God said, you don't have to worry about being in the furnace. I've already been there and I've already conquered it. All you got to do is follow suit. And when I bring you out, I'm going to make you a witness and a testimony to everybody that puts you in there that I am God. Thank the glory. Hallelujah. The furnace was booby track. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it worked out for their good because they trusted in God. Amen. They trusted in God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's our time. Amen. Um, I'll give you back into the hands of our uh, sister kid, hallelujah. But God is good. He is good. Mm. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Lord. Oh, I thought this was a great lesson. Can we please give <laughs> Elder Terrell a round of applause for that beautiful talk lesson? 23 participants. Yeah. Wow. And what's Praise resonating with me, he, he is. He And that's two words, he is. Mm. Amen. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, we just want to thank you so much for coming on our Bible study. And we so appreciate your support. And just keep on, keep, just keep on, keep on. Keep on. Um, Pastor, are you on? Yes, I am. I'm here. Amen. 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 Let us give, God bless you, Sister Cheryl. Let us give Ella Terrell another hand. What a marvelous job he done on the night. Amen. We just thank God for that. We're at the church just trying to correct some problems we've been having with our camera. Not the camera, it's something else that we found out. And um, so that's why we're at the church. But we thank God for the word on tonight. And let us just pray. We thank God for all of you on tonight. Father God in heaven, we thank you once again for allowing us to be in this place. We thank you for the word on tonight. Thank you, thank you for Ella Terrell. And then for everyone that have joined in tonight. We're asking special blessings to be upon each and every one of them. Every family that's represented here today, go out and touch every one of their family members, oh God. Lord, and we thank you. Look on Deacon Bell tonight. Strengthen his heart, his whole entire family. Strengthen them, letting them know that you have never done anything wrong. Then, Lord, bless the saints tonight. Oh God, we thank you for each and every one of them. Oh, God, grant them whatever they were asking you for. You said you would supply the need. Do it today in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. amen. Continue to pray for our first lady. I love amen. you, and there's not a thing in the world you can do about it. God bless you. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. God bless everyone. God bless everyone. <laughs> First lady, good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.